Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, also known as Made in the Moment, and today I'm going to show you how to make this crochet balaclava. The little pattern that's on it is optional, but I will show you how to do that if that's something you're interested in. You can of course just make it solid in one color or two different colors for the ribbing, whatever, there's a lot of options. This is a really basic construction, so you're going to start with the ribbing around the neck. You're going to move up to the hood, decrease and sew the top together, and then add ribbing around the face. This balaclava is the same construction as my beginner knit balaclava. So if you knit as well, then you can go ahead and check that out. If you like what I'm doing and you want to keep up with my other work, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. If you make this and post this, then please tag me. I love seeing people make my patterns. I have some plans for other tutorials coming up soon. I have a knit shorts pattern that I want to make. I have a knit cardigan pattern and I have a scrappy pants tutorial that I want to do. Let me know which one of those sounds the most interesting to you in the comments below and I will try and get to that as soon as I can. But that's all I have for you. So without further ado, let's get into the video. What you are going to need for this tutorial is about 150 grams of yarn, a crochet hook. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter one, but you can use whatever is right for your yarn. You'll need a tape measure, a yarn needle to weave in your ends and scissors and a stitch marker. The first thing you need to do is take a measurement. So I'm going to measure around my head right at my chin level. And this is just going to be how wide your ribbing is going to end up. So for me, that is 17 inches and that is going to leave a little bit of positive ease around my neck but it will fit pretty nice and snug on my chin. And then the next measurement you're going to take is from your jawline to the top of your collarbone. For me, this is about four inches and this is going to be the height of my ribbing. So to start off, you're going to take your yarn. I'm going to use two different colors, one for the ribbing and one for kind of the head part of the balaclava. So I'm going to start out with this yarn for my ribbing and because this yarn is a little bit thinner, I'm going to double it up. And all this means is I'm just going to be crocheting with two strands at one time instead of just one. The first thing I'm going to do is tie a slip knot and then place that on my hook. Then I'm going to make a chain stitch. So to do that, I'm going to yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through. And I'm going to chain until this chain reaches four inches. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a row of yarn over slip stitches. So it sounds a little complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. And it tells you exactly what to do with the name of the stitch. So you're going to yarn over. You can see here, there's this chain right here next to the hook. We're going to go into the second chain from the hook, which is this one right here. And I'm going to go into the back bump. So here's what the front of the chain looks like. Here's what the back of the chain looks like. And I'm going to go into the second chain from the hook right here. Then I'm going to grab my yarn, pull through right here, and then pull through the rest of the loops on my hook. So that again is yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on my hook. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And I'm just going to continue that all the way to the end of my row. So here's my last stitch. And then I'm actually not going to chain one at the end of my row. I'm just going to turn my work. And now I'm going to be working in the back loop. So the front loop is the loop that's closest to you and the back loop is the one that is furthest away from you. So I'm gonna do the same stitch, yarn over, insert my hook into the back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the rest of the loops on my hook. 
So the reason that I don't chain one at the end of the row is just because I think it gives me a cleaner edge, but it's up to you if you want to do a turning chain or not. Let me show you that again. Yarn over, insert my hook into the back loop, yarn over, pull through, all three loops on the hook. And I'm just going to do that all the way to the end of the row. And here is the last stitch. And again, I will not chain one as a turning chain. I'm just going to yarn over and go straight into this stitch here, into the back loops only. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through all the loops. And that is basically how you're gonna do this stitch. That's how you're gonna do the ribbing and just continue on until you reach the measurement that you took around your chin. So for me, that's 17 inches. I'm going to continue working on this and then I'll come back and show you how to join in the round and move on to the rest of the balaclava. So I have gotten my 17 inches of ribbing done. Here's what it all looks like. And now I'm gonna show you how to close this up. So what I'm gonna do first is chain one, and then you're going to place the two edges of the ribbing together. And this side is going to be the wrong side. So this is gonna be where the seam is visible. So I'm going to go through the back loop of this first stitch and the back loop of this second stitch. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of these and pull through the loop on my hook, which is a slip stitch. So I'm gonna do the same thing going through the back loop and the back loop of the stitch, yarning over and pulling through all of the loops on my hook. And this is what it's starting to look like from the right side. And here's what it looks like from the wrong side. You're basically just going to go all the way down the row, going into the back loop of each stitch, yarning over and pulling through. So now that I've got to the end, I'm going to turn the ribbing inside out. So you can see this is the right side and this is the wrong side. And before I go on, I am actually going to weave in this end. This is probably controversial, I know, but I started weaving my ends in as I went along on a few projects and it really is a life changer. So I recommend you do it. You obviously don't have to, you can just skip this part if you want to, but I'm just going to insert my yarn needle into this seam that I just made with the slip stitches. And then I'm going to go back in the other direction so that when the fabric stretches out a little bit, the end doesn't just like pull out and get exposed. And then I'm just going to trim that. And look at how nice the ribbing looks already. So the next thing I'm going to do is chain one and I'm going to add one row of single crochet all the way around the top of this ribbing. So each single crochet is going to go into one row of the ribbing. So I'm going to put one single crochet right in here. So to single crochet, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through the two loops on my hook. Then for the second single crochet, it's going to go into this space, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. Then the next one is going to go in here, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and just repeat all the way around.
So you can kind of see where these single crochets are sitting. You don't want to put too many in because then it will start to spread out and increase and you don't want to put too few in because then it will decrease. But once you kind of get the hang of it, you can see the little holes at the tops of the rows where the stitch goes into. So I have single crocheted all the way around and to finish the row, I'm going to make a slip stitch to connect my first single crochet with the last one that I just did. So to do that, I'm going to insert my hook into the top of the last stitch. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. If you are using the same color for the whole balaclava, just do that exactly as I did. If you're switching colors for the rest of it, then this is where you're going to switch your yarn. So instead of slip stitching with the this teal color, I'm going to switch to my new color on the slip stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook, pull the yarn over, I'm pinching it between my fingers back here, pull through, and pull through. And then I like to secure the color change with a knot. So I'm going to take the tail of my new yarn and take my old yarn and then tie them together like this. Then I'm going to cut the old yarn and now we have the new yarn. I'm going to start off by chaining one. So before I go on, I have to figure out how much of the front part I want to be open for the face. So to do that, you're gonna try the ribbing on and you're going to use a stitch marker to mark on the other side, you basically want the hood part to come up to right underneath your earlobes. It's There's going to be a ribbing that you're gonna put onto the front, so it's gonna go a little bit further forward than that, but you want it to be a little bit more back so that you can add the ribbing onto that. So you can either do that by trying it on, or you can measure from your earlobe across the bottom of your chin to your other earlobe. So for me, that is about nine inches. With the ribbing stretched, I'm going to measure across. So I'm going to do half double crochets now. To half double crochet, you yarn over first, like you did for the yarn over slip stitch. Then you're going to insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three. I'm also crocheting over these ends as I go, just so that I don't have to weave them in later. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, yarn over, pull through all three loops. I'm going to continue making half double crochets until I get to my stitch marker on the other side. And once I get to the stitch with my stitch marker, I'm going to make one last half double crochet. And at this point, before I go on, I'm just going to try this on and make sure that the hood part hits where I want it to on my face. So I'm happy where this is sitting and I'm going to move on to the next row. So to do that, I'm going to chain one, then I'm going to turn my work and make half double crochets going back in the other direction. And again, once I get to the end of the row, I'm just going to chain one and turn my work back the other way. I'm just going to keep going until the section of half double crochets measures six inches. Okay, so this is obviously optional, but I am just gonna show you what I'm doing with this so that if you wanna add something like this, then you can. Uh, I thought it would be fun to add a row of checkers here. So I'm gonna do four stitches wide and three, probably three rows high for each checker. So I started off by making three half double crochets and on the fourth one, I'm going to start it and kind of like when we switched colors for the hood section of the balaclava, I'm going to finish off the stitch with the new color. 
and then make four half double crochets in this other color. And on the fourth one, I'm going to finish off the stitch with the other color and repeat. Some people like to crochet every stitch over the second color when they're doing checkers. I like to kind of alternate so that you can't see the stitch through as much. So basically I'm going to half double crochet two without that color underneath and then on the fourth one I'm going to crochet over it and then change colors and you can see that you can't it's not sticking through so I'm going to repeat that same pattern for every color change so I'm going to crochet over the tail for one do two half double crochets without crocheting over the tail and then the fourth one will go over and will be the color change. Knowing how to do color changes, you can also add stripes, you can add different kind of graphic patterns to the sides of the balaclava. There's sort of a lot of options here, and I just wanted to show you what I'm, deciding, what I'm deciding to do for this one. I think it could also be really cool to have the whole hood part be checkers. Okay, this is what happens when you don't plan and don't count your stitches. So I'm ending up with just two at the end here and I don't really care. So I'm just going to keep going. If I wanted to, I would go back and probably count and actually evenly divide the number of stitches, but I'm fine with just a half square here. So then I'm going to turn my work and because I'm making the square Taller, I'm just going to do the same color changes on the same stitches. So two in the darker color and then four in this teal color. And then back to the darker color. Okay, I have gotten through six inches of the hood part of the balaclava and now I'm going to start some decreases in the center of the piece. So what I have done is counted all my stitches and marked the middle. I have 50 stitches, so the middle two are marked here. I am just going to make half double crochets until I get to my stitch marker. And once I get to my stitch marker, I'm going to crochet these two stitches together. So I'm going to start my half double crochet as normal, yarn over, pull through, and then instead of finishing it, I'm going to yarn over again, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Now I have five loops on my hook and I'm just going to yarn over and pull through all five of them and continue to the end of the row. Since my first row was an even number, I crocheted two together. On the next row, I have an odd number, so I'm going to crochet three stitches together. I'm gonna move my stitch marker from the center to the stitch that we crocheted together, then make half double crochets till I get to one stitch before the stitch marker. So I'm one stitch before my marker. I'm going to do kind of the same thing, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm gonna do that one more time, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through. And then half double crochet to the end of the row. So I just keep repeating that pattern of half double crocheting until I get to the stitch marker, 
decreasing two, and then on the next row, decreasing three. And I'm going to do that until I have about four and a half inches left at the top. Another way to measure this is the height. So this is about eight and a half inches from the ribbing. So once you've gotten to this point, you're going to seam up the top of the balaclava. You have two options, you can slip stitch. And if you're going to do that, then you want to turn the hood inside out and slip stitch along the edge here, kind of just like how we did on the ribbing at the beginning. What I'm going to do is seam the top together with my yarn needle. I just find that this is a slightly cleaner and less bulky edge. I'm going to give myself a generous amount of yarn to sew with because I hate running out of yarn when I'm seaming. So the first thing you're going to do, I have chained one at the end of my row already, so I'm just going to pull the yarn all the way through and tighten it. Then I'm going to thread my yarn needle and I am doing, I'm going to be doing an invisible seam, which is where I start with the right sides out. So I'm going to start by going across and into the first stitch, just like this, pulling through to tighten. And then I'm going to go back across and go through the second stitch like this, pull through, and just continue in that way all the way until I get to the end of the seam. And you can already see this is a fairly invisible seam right here. And the wrong side is this kind of seam like this. So when you get to the end, it can be a little bit trickier to see where you're going into, but you're still just following the same pattern until there's no hole left at the top at all. So I can see there's no hole left. I'm just going to send the yarn to the back. I'm going to tie it off on the inside. And then while I have my yarn needle out, I'm going to weave in the ends right away. And trim that. And then depending on where you did color changes before in your own project, you may or may not have a few ends to weave in. Like I said, it sucks doing it now, but it's so much better than waiting until the end. So I'm going to weave in these ends right now, and then I will show you how to add the ribbing to the front of the balaclava. So now I have all my ends weaved in. And now I'm going to add the ribbing that goes around the face part. So you're going to make a slip knot, insert your hook, put the slip knot onto the hook, pull it through, and tighten. And then you're just going to make a row of single crochets all the way around the edge of the hood, starting off by chaining one, then placing a single crochet into that same stitch. I am crocheting over the tail. So to single crochet, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. It's just like a half double crochet, but without the first yarn over. So once you get to this corner, I'm going to put one more single crochet into the ribbing and then just turn and start placing single crochets along the side. And you want to kind of go with about one single crochet per row. And if in doubt, then skip a row. Because you want the ribbing to kind of come in a little bit and not flare out too much. 
So I'm just going to go all the way around and then I'll show you how to end the row and how to start the ribbing. I have made it all the way around and I'm going to slip stitch into this first single crochet to close the round. And then I'm going to chain the height that I want my ribbing to be. So I know mine, I know I want mine to be a little over an inch. So for me, that's six chains. And we're going to do the same ribbing that we did for this bottom part. Yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and pull through two. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through. And I'm going to do that all the way down the chain. And once I get to the bottom, this is the stitch we slip stitched into. So the stitch right next to it, I'm going to insert my hook and make another slip stitch and make a second one. Then I'm going to turn my work and going into the back loops, go back up the chain. So we have one slip stitch, second slip stitch, and this is the first stitch we're going into. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into the back loop, yarn over, pull through, And again, when I get to the top, I'm not going to do a turning chain. I'm just going to turn my work, yarn over, insert right into that first stitch, and carry on. Down the row, and then slip stitch into this next stitch and the next one and go back up. So I'm going to do that all the way around and then show you how to seam the end. All right, I have made it to the end of my ribbing. You can see my last row of ribbing goes right into the stitch here. There's a little bit of space, but we're gonna close that up with the seam. So I'm going to do a slip stitch seam just like I did for the bottom ribbing. So this is the right side. I'm going to turn this inside out. So this is going into the wrong side. So just to make this initial seam a little easier, I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to insert my hook through the back loop of this side and then the back loop of this side. Yarn over pull through to slip stitch. Repeat that through the back loop here and the back loop here. Yarn over, pull through, pull through. And I had five stitches, so I'll have five slip stitches to seam them. There we go. And then I'm just going to chain one and cut my yarn, pull that through. At this point, if you've been weaving in your ends as you went, like I have, then you should only have just this one end left to weave in. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you make this and post it anywhere, then please tag me at Made in the Moment. I always love seeing the things that you guys make. It's so fun. Uh, there's a lot of room for variation, obviously, on the hood part, so please use your creative freedom and have fun with it. I'm going to insert a few clips of me modeling this at the end. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.